All right, here we are again for another Tableau video, and we're going to be covering fixed level of detail calculation. So let's go. All right, guys, here we are again for another video, and it's actually been about three weeks, maybe even longer since I've actually touched Tableau because we've been doing so many renovations in the house. My missus is about a month away from giving birth. Um, and so we're doing a lot of renovations. I had to pack up all my gear, uh, all the cables, which is who knows how much cables are right. So it's been a while. So if you've contacted me, you sent me an email and I haven't responded in a while, which has been super busy. So I'm trying to catch up now uh, before the baby gets here. So here we go. All right. I got a question from a student and uh, the student was having a very specific type of problem that can be solved using fixed level of detail calculation. But let me first walk you through the problem. All right, here we are with Tableau, and I'm just gonna use Superstore for this example. And I'm gonna also explain when this will come up in the industry. So a lot of the times when you're working in the industry, uh, you wanna calculate things at a very low level of granularity. So say you work at Woolworths or Walmart, a big store, right? So you have thousands and thousands of customers coming in and you wanna go, how many customers do this and how many customers do that? If you're gonna present those results to a stakeholder or a senior uh, manager or something, you can't provide it at customer level because the data is gonna be super long. So you want a way to be able to aggregate that down to say there are 10 that do this and there are 10 that do that, okay? Now to do this in Tableau is not straightforward in the sense that um, you can't just use the formulas as is. There is a very specific way of solving these kinds of problems. Um, and the idea is we're solving at multiple levels of granularity. If you don't get that, don't worry, I'll explain. So here is the problem. Say I have subcategory in here. Okay, so I've got subcategory, got all these categories. And within each of those, we have a product. All right, you can see all these products. So there's heaps and heaps of products. And then I want to bring in the sales. Now, let me make the format a little bit easier to read for you guys. Okay, there we go. So we've got all these little products. Now, each of these has sales, okay, as you can see here. Now, to my stakeholder, they say, how many are above, you know, $500? How many are below $500? Now, I can't go one by one and count them, right? But I can certainly use a formula. So if I go here and go create calculated field, the simple formula is, let's call it above 500. Let's go if sales is greater than 500, then we'll just say yes or uh, not or <laughs> else, no, and then close it off, right? So that's our formula right there. So it makes sense. Now, if I bring this in, I drop it into rows, you're gonna see, and maybe I'll color code it for you as well, okay? Are these above 500? No, well, this one's 500, but it needs to be above 500. So you see all the orange ones are above 500 and all the blue ones are below. So the most obvious way to solve this is like, well, if you wanna count how many yeses, how many no's, just get rid of product name, right? That's the most straightforward approach. But something happens if you do that, okay? Suddenly everything is a yes, and here's why. Whenever you do a formula in Tableau, it's always referencing the lowest level of granularity as per your visualization. So in this case, the lowest level is actually subcategory. So the aggregation of sales is applying to subcategory. When you got rid of the product name, it's no longer factored in. So what you need to be able to do is factor that product name in whilst not displaying it in their visualization. The way we solve that is something called level of detail calculations. Now, if you've never done that before, if you go to my website, so Jellyman Education, uh, jellyman-education.thinkific.com, in the Tableau bundle, which, you know, if you subscribe to it, you get access to the whole site. So none of these multiple payment plans and all that kind of stupid crap. I hate that. It's just one basic price and you get access to everything. So the whole training package. Here in Tableau Desktop for Experts, which I think is like 40 hours long now or something, something ridiculous. Uh, oh, 21 hours and then the other ones, I think, the whole thing is that many, right? So it's huge. So in here, if you wanted to learn in detail how LODs work, okay, so section four, this goes from the very basic understanding of LODs through 15 different case studies. You can see here, problem 15, right? To walk you through how LODs work, 
in terms of solving problems on different granularities, okay? Because it's not straightforward, um, especially for beginners. But if you wanted to learn that, it's all in here, okay? So just in case you want some extra training. So here's how you solve this. Let's go back a step, okay? Really what we wanna do is preserve this part in our formula, okay? So the way we do that is we build something called Hang on, my ears itchy. A <laughs> level of detail calculation. Here's how you do it. Create calculated field. Okay. And we're going to do a lot. Now, it really helps a lot if we get rid of this label right here. Okay. Is the granularity that you want to calculate at is what you have displayed for this step. So if this is how deep the analysis is, so you got subcategory and then product name. That's what I want you to display. If you have another two, make sure you include it in here for your problem, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna write my LOD calculation. So here's how you do it. You go braces, okay, braces, fixed. And now we wanna bring in all the dimensions, semicolon, oh, sorry, colon, all the aggregated measures, and then close it off using another set of braces, okay? And the easiest way to do that is just drag this one here, drag this one here, okay? So subcategory, comma, product name. And then to separate it from the measure, you do colon, okay, the two dots there, and then you bring in your measure, okay? So this part always has to be an aggregate. These always have to be your dimensions, okay? And then we close the whole thing off with braces we go okay there you go so now what happens is this formula will generate this value right exactly these values at this granularity even if you're not displaying this one okay so let me show you if i uh, there's actually no way of actually displaying it directly actually no there is so say i have some of sales here Right, I'm going to get rid of this. Instead, I want you to just remember, and maybe we'll take a screenshot of this. Okay, so let me just take a screenshot of that. There is a way to test this. So say I have product name. I'm going to bring in LOD and replace the old one. Now, the first thing that should happen is if we've done this correctly is all the values should stay the same. Okay. The only thing that changed then is one is a dollar sign, one isn't. That's the only difference. Okay. If I add in another level of granularity, the value shouldn't change. So if I bring in segment, right, look at this. So you see how they're all 88? These are all 500. That's because when you do a LOD, it always operates at the dimensions and granularity that you specified, namely in our case, these two, okay? That's why if you add another one, it's not gonna split it up any further because it knows it's only operating all the way down here, which means when you aggregate, it only applies up to that point. So here's how we can make use of this. If I go back, okay. all right, I'm gonna bring in that one. So say I took a very small sample, let's say that one, like that, okay? So we have how many yeses? One, two, three, four. So four yeses and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four and eight, um, so four yeses, eight no's. If I get rid of these sum of sales, get rid of this, get rid of this, okay? And we bring in this LOD uh, that we calculated. Where is it? LOD, 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 we lost it. Did we lose it? Where did I put that formula just then? I'm in the right one, LOD. Oh, it's because I kept pressing back that I lost the formula. Give me one sec. Sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, fixed this. See, this is what happens when I pack up my room and I'm a bit out of practice. Start making mistakes, man. Some of sales. Okay. So it's just that one. Okay. Let's call this blood. All right. So now if I bring this in, okay, we have what we had before. What I want to do is write the condition on the LOD, okay? So if I open this up again, this is the actual value that represents that sales, okay? So I can just use it like any other value. I can use it within an if function. So if this value, okay, is greater than 500, then yes, else, no, end. 
Okay. Now I'm missing a apostrophe there. Okay. And go OK. This will now convert from a measure into a dimension because it's now a, a string output. And if I bring it right next to rows, you're going to see those yeses and nos again, right? Exactly the same. So four yeses, eight nos. If I count the number of LUDs, right? So if I right click drag this into text and I count, it's going to say one because each row counts as one. But what should happen now is now that I'm using a LUD, if I get rid of product name, these will aggregate to the correct number, namely four yeses, eight nos. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so let's test. If I get rid of product name, let's see what we get. There you go. Four yeses and eight nos. Now, when you reduce the sample by, you know, just doing a few, but then you prove it logically, to extend it to the whole analysis, simply get rid of your filter. For every single category, yeses and nos, and I could probably even rearrange it this way, okay? I can now see at an aggregated level all those thousands of products, right, in a smaller visualization. How do you take it from here? Well, most likely I will always display this in some sort of color or um, way for them to see visually. So you can add this as columns like that, right? We can color code it in terms of highest to lowest. That's something you always want to show. You want to go highest to lowest like that. Maybe you want to show your totals. So row grand totals. Okay, so we can see that paper is the highest. We'll extend up for the whole thing. Okay, and there you have it. That's probably how I would display. So um, let me just find the question here. So Sid, hopefully this answers your problem. If you guys want to learn in extreme detail how you do LODs and solving these really complicated problems, please check out the website, jellyman-education.thinkific.com and everything you need to know about all of Tableau is here. All right, so once again, thanks for listening and I'll see you guys next time.